Howdy, how's it going? My name's Davy Chappie, and today I'm going to be giving a brief overview of the way that religion works in the different settings of the D&D multiverse. Now, to clarify, I'm going to touch on a few of the settings in D&D and go over how their different pantheons interact with the world at large, but I'm not going to go into detail about each individual god since I plan on doing a video about all the different settings in their pantheons later. And also, if I did each god, then this video wouldn't be finished until I turned 30, just due to the sheer critical mass of how many gods are in each pantheon. Like, especially Greyhawk. Look, you don't need 50 different gods running around doing doing god things, alright? Also, I'm not going to be covering the real-life pantheons like Greek or Egyptian, even though they're represented in 5e, because I'm not a historian, and if you came to my videos looking for practical information that can be reasonably used in normal life, you've come to the wrong place. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's begin. So, to start with, we have everybody's favorite setting, the Forgotten Realms. The realms are really traditional in terms of how the gods interact with the world, with some gods trying to take over the world, some hiring out four to five plucky young adventurers to stop them, and other gods just dicking around with everybody for the lulls. Sometimes the gods want something to be satisfied, sometimes they're they're just dicks. There's really not much to say about the Forgotten Realms gods in particular, except that most gods in this video operate the same way as them, so the Forgotten Realms is a good starting point since it's just so basic. Moving on, Greyhawk is a lot like the Forgotten Realms, or maybe the Forgotten Realms is more like Greyhawk since Greyhawk came first, but like I said before, Greyhawk has a lot of gods, and that's because Greyhawk likes to have its deities worshipped by a lot of different societies over time. If you talk to an Oridian, he'll have different gods for things than if you talk to a Backlinish person, but there will be a lot of overlap at certain points since their pantheons essentially just evolved from each other other over different periods of time, like in the real world. Forgotten Realms does this too, but it's more prominent in Greyhawk, which is why I mention it. Dragonlance has fewer gods than either Greyhawk or the Forgotten Realms, but they do have a cool system for the gods they do have. See, gods in Dragonlance take the form of either constellations in the sky or different moons. Whenever a god comes down to the mortal world, their constellation or moon disappears, letting everyone know that they're off bothering the locals, making it a bitch to use stars to know where you're going, and causing mass panic over the change in water cycles brought on by the removal of an entire moon. Other than this, the gods operate like normal, with your good, bad, and ugly. Just remember that if the stars go missing, it's probably due to somebody causing trouble that you have to deal with. So Eberron takes a much more agnostic approach to gods in the world by having religious magic come not from the gods themselves, but rather the faith of the person worshipping it. Since all you need is the power of belief, this has led to the idea that maybe the gods don't actually even exist, and the magic just came from inside of you all along. But assuming that they are real, good people generally follow the Sovereign Host, which is the pantheon of good aligned gods, and bad people generally follow the Dark Six, which are their edgy rivals. Some people also worship the Church of the Silver Flame, which is like if Catholicism got really into inquisitions, and elves specifically are prone to worshipping the blood of Vol, who are a bunch of really old elves that stay alive via positive energy necromancy. Finally, I specifically avoided talking about non-human gods until the end because a lot of them cross over into different settings, so you're just as likely to find a follower of Grumption Greyhawk as you are in Dragonlance. But for every race in D&D, there's a good chance that that race has a god watching over them, and these gods are the reason why a lot of races act like stereotypes, because they're following how their gods expect their species to act. For elves, you have Coralyn, teaching them how to become the biggest dick. For dragons, you have Bahamut or Tiamat, teaching them that the color of your skin is all that matters. And even gnomes have Garl Glittergold, a deity who I can only describe as some dude who just happened to wander into the room where gods go to be gods, setting up a squatting nest, and now nobody wants to ask him to leave, because the last people who tried were kobolds, and his response was to destroy their entire city and way of life. Keep in mind that different settings might not use all of the racial gods, and some just ignore them altogether, but for the most part, if you're looking for a god to worship and all of the settings specific gods are boring, why not try out racial superiority? That sounds fun. But that'll about do it. Apologies for the short video length. This this week has been a bit busy for me, and also I'm currently writing the script for my cleric video, and if you know how many archetypes are in that, oh boy do I need time. But I still hope you enjoyed the video, and leave a like and comment if you did, and hey, maybe subscribe if you want to be a cool dude. Also, if you want to stay up to date on all of your Davy news, you can find a link to my Discord in the description below. But yeah, Davy out.